This presentation focuses on the perspective of the Volcano Disaster Assistance Program, or VDAP, which is a partnership of the USGS and USAID. Now in its 34th year, VDAP does a combination of in-country and remote response to volcanic crises, and it provides a source of capacity building and technology transfer for volcano observatories and their partners around the world. Ten years ago, VDAP Project Chief John Pallister wrote an abstract for an earlier version of this session with John Ewart. John has since retired, with, and our perspective this time was written by me and John Ewart, together with input from a wide number of the VDAP staff. In 2010, the abstract focused on the evolution of VDAP since 1986 and stressed that the future would look to advances in eruption forecasting, emphasizing not only when an eruption will take place, but also on how big it could be. The abstract noted that an international focus on this problem, emphasizing both stochastic and de deterministic methods, offered the best opportunity for advancement. VDAP also looked forward to the use of new techniques to increase the multi-parameter nature of our forecasts. I'll take a few minutes to discuss some ways in which VDAP addressed the need for multi-parameter monitor monitoring, as well as its efforts to lean into a rush from forecasting. Largely, John Pallister was able to increase the scope of VDAP's activities by adding new staff. In 2010, we were a group of about 10 or fewer staff focused on monitoring equipment, seismology, and with geological expertise focused mostly on stratigraphy and petrology. By 2010, we've almost tripled in size, with most of that growth happening between 2010 and 2016. I joined on in 2018 when John retired. Though a description of our growth runs the risk of being somewhat parochial, parochial, I think our growth mirrors what has happened globally, where volcanology is increasingly a multidisciplinary exercise and where eruption forecasts require a wide diversity of monitoring data, global analog data, numerical models, and probabilistic perspectives. I'll grow through a few of the key areas of change and then we'll finish with a list of goals that VDAP staff have highlighted as strategically critical to our future. First, it's worth mentioning that satellite-based data is critical for our ability to provide overseas partners with situational awareness. Through our access to a complete spectrum of remote sensing data and by working with non-VDAP staff at USGS headquarters, we can track and report on an as-needed basis. USGS INSAR experts can rapidly order and process data to contribute to this oversight, and we frequently reach out to colleagues abroad or at NASA as well. Satellite data also allows us to use photogrammetry techniques to track the effusion rates of lava flows and domes, including where we have concern that collapses could have devastating consequences. DEMs are made from photographs taken by drone or helicopter as well, and our staff teaches courses in these techniques. Key hires in geochemistry have added expertise in scanning DOAS and multigas technologies, which we can provide to our partners around the world, as well as to assist in data reduction and interpretation. We are also adept at using miniaturized versions of these techniques in drones during eruptions, as we've done both at Kilauea and at Agung. In terms of seismology, we've added staff who focus on creating alarms and integrating software to track earthquake types. We also have the ability to assist with the sorts of tomography and seismic velocity mapping that allows Im improved ability to accurately locate earthquakes in heterogeneous volcanic terrain. Similarly, we distribute software and provide training to model GPS and INSAR data that we can be used that can be used to interpret deformation due to earthquakes and intrusive episodes that we are and we are working on similar software to help interpret tilt data. Addition of a computer scientist has permitted us to improve USGS software products like Swarm and Valve to set up servers for our colleagues to track our own metrics and to import new data streams like lightning and thermal data for hundreds of volcanoes that we track. In addition, we have created a new reporting system that allows us to better help embassies and other USGS agencies with an interest in the potential effects of volcanic eruptions. A major effort of VDAP has been to increase its use of global data. Through collaborations with Vovodat, the Smithsonian, and addition of new staff in geology and seismology, we've done that. Our ultimate goal is to provide tools and data globally. A recent example is the Yavse Volcanic Hazard Map database, 
where VDAP staff played a key role in moving this forward. The focus on data and forecasting has allowed us to expand our use of probability trees and to assist our partners in using this method to categorize, assess, and prioritize volcanic data. Owing to the much greater availability of commercially uh, available geophysical instrumentation, one of the major shifts in our engineering program is to purchase, configure, and donate off-the-shelf digital seismometers, digitizers, radios, and cell modems. So we no longer need to custom build the analog systems that were key 20 years ago. This has freed us to incorporate infrasound and other sensors to optimize field stations that are less vulnerable to lightning and adapt telemetry systems to take advantage of local telecommunications infrastructure, if there is some, where it is technically and not economically feasible. All in all, we've made a lot of progress on these goals of 10 years ago. Though forecasting volcanic eruptions remains a challenge, we are much better equipped to track volcanic unrest and forecast possible impacts. Moreover, the increasing amount of monitoring equipment on the world's volcanoes means we now do fewer in-country responses. Over the past five years, we've done more remote responses than ones where we've traveled, and we sent equipment to colleagues this year for their responses at Sangai and Taal. Clearly, COVID has reinforced this trend. With the added time and resources, though, we can focus on education, training, and communications, which has been an expanding part of our program, and some of these programs are shown in the slide. For the next 10 years, our staff has outlined a number of key goals that we feel should be part of volcanic risk mitigation in 2030. A lot of these goals relate to volcano data availability, sharing, and tool development. We want to increase the links such that organizations from all over the world increasingly work together on shared goals such as volcanic databases and open source tools for data analysis. We promise our efforts and funds will be distributed towards fostering and aiding efforts to create collaborations such as that global groups can work together to build more sustainable tools and databases which will have long-term traction. We'll also increase efforts to collaborate with global and regional organizations to improve volcano preparedness and risk reduction programs. Such collaborations will allow uh, global developments to be integrated into observatory level decision making systems. For example, allowing satellite data or data from regional or global networks to be seamlessly fed to the local observatories to foster their decision-making process without creating additional sources of information flow that interfere with observatory for protocols and relationships. We foresee a need to continue development of open source tools for data analysis, visualization, and dissemination to be utilized even in remote locations with limited bandwidth and variable levels of staff training. We see a critical need for accessible volcano information and event databases that allow users to improve unrest analysis, to identify analogs, and to inform probabilistic forecasts. In order for observatories to benefit from access to this information, they will need to increasingly share their data as well. Now, by an event database, we're talking about heights of plumes, changes in alert levels, types of earthquakes, the changes in thermal activity, and the other kinds of observations that aren't present in normal data flowing from monitoring equipment. Desired consequences of this enhanced data availability are, for example, creating a daily vo global volcano report that feeds into databases as well as standard terminology and improve interactions among observatories, VACs, and academia. Another clear area for collaboration is in socialization and a communications protocols for emergency response. One major focus for VDAP that was not anticipated in 2010, but that has grown markedly and is a clear focus for future development is our binational exchange program and our work on risk mitigation. We've run a, over a dozen such exchanges with Colombia, Ecuador, and Chile focused not on scientists, but allowing land managers, emergency responders, and hazard coordinators from Latin America to share experiences with their U.S. counterparts, allowing for major insights by both sides. Our staff is mostly scientists, but we increasingly seek collaborations with social scientists and others who can help us apply our expertise to greater effect. In addition, we will strive to diversify our staff to reflect national and global populations, 
and to make our products available in multiple languages. We will continue to support collaborations among neighboring countries to aid each other during volcanic crises. And the communication tools that we've been increasingly utilizing during the COVID-19 pandemic may prove crucial towards these goals. Well, thank you very much for your attention.